and welcome to another glorious episode of We Read It One Night, the podcast where two sisters giggle our way through our favorite romance novels and maybe even start a romance revolution. Today, we're covering Accidentally Engaged by Farah Heron, a Canadian baking Desi gossip girl, except everyone is gossip girl and more people fall in love. We have foot fetishes, we have vacation plans in Tanzania, we have our beautiful couple, Rena and Adim, falling in love. And while you're listening, we also have merch, which you can check out through the link in our description below. Enjoy the show! So, we have temporarily acquired a cat. We have temporarily acquired a cat. We have. Why did you say it temporarily? Twice? Why are you saying it again? A cat. Why have you said it a third time? <laughs> I don't know. I just like didn't really nail it the first time. We have a cat right now. <laughs> are you gonna? Yeah. It's exciting. I mean, I've, there's nothing more to say. Rachel's pet sitting. She's here. She has opposable thumbs. Oh, yeah, not opposable thumbs. She has I'm, polydactyl. Again, have you tried? <laughs> has she tried? Like, I'm just saying they're very large and she uses them like hands. Do you really think she wouldn't have, like, opened the back door by now to get at the birds? She, she tried. She's too short. <laughs> She's just a baby. I literally saw her try today. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> She's just a baby. Yeah. She's a baby who wants to escape. So this book and reading the one-star reviews for it gave me the idea to, if we ever get a functional TikTok back up and running <laughs> to just like dramatically read one star reviews from different books. They can have people like guess the book, but like so many of them could like apply to any book. Yeah. Well, it's usually some version of like, if you want a man who is just abs with a penis and a heroine who's too stupid to live, read this book with too many sex scenes. It's basically just <laughs> porn. It was not for me. But if you are looking for a light-hearted rom-com with all your favorite cliches and no other plot other than the MC drooling over men explicitly, this might be for you. This wasn't even that explicit of a book, honestly. No, it wasn't explicit at all. Like, it, all the sex scenes were closed door, basically. I. It wasn't, like, closed door. It was like door, like there's one part in the book when the, they're talking through like a cracked door and that's what it was. It's like door cracked yeah, open with the chain on. It's not like twilight open. and then it was morning. Like it's not that level, but like it's not, yeah, it's not like. They are like we had sex against also, the door. so many of the one star, should we reveal now or wait for the big, the big kahuna? I feel like I just want to say now. I just want to talk about this the whole book. So. Wait, 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 wait. What? We got to say what the book is. Oh, sure, sure. Okay, this is Accidentally Engaged by Farah Heron. And this book, had the hero has a foot fetish. And so Amazing. many of the one-star reviews were like, oh my God, I just had to stop as soon as I found out he had a foot fetish. Like, oh, it was just too much. There was a whole chapter devoted to a foot rub. So I was like expecting some like really weird, like sensual, like very sexual foot rub. But like if we hadn't been told he had a foot fetish, this would have been like a totally normal foot rub. You know what I mean? It would have just been like, oh, he's a nice, he's like a great guy. He like rubs my feet when they hurt. Like it wouldn't have been weird at all. I was just like, just tell me you're boring without like Telling right. me you're boring. Just tell me you can't even handle like the label of like a kink. You know what I mean? Like, like without it, even stop kink shaming. He's not yeah. weird about it. He's not like walking around like licking strangers' feet on the street or like masturbating. He's just like yeah. I like to look at them. They're He's nice. Just like oh maybe I shouldn't rub your feet like since it's my foot thing like. <laughs> Yeah, he explicitly brings it up. He's like, I want right. you to have the full information before you consent to this. Yeah. I love the foot of fetish. That's why I picked this book. Because <laughs> we always talk about a hero's like having a theoretical foot fetish and this one's like canon. Yeah. <laughs> it's a no, canon 100%. foot fetish. Yeah. It's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say like a good chunk of the one star reviews were mostly like criticizing this for like being Muslim representation. So the hero so the heroine well, both the hero and the heroine they their families are from Tanzania of Indian Gujarati descent, which I didn't know this until reading this book. But apparently, there's a large um, like Indian Gujarati population in Tanzania. So people who's like the community came over like I don't know how like however many generations ago, and then sort of formed like a I guess 
diaspora. I don't know what the word would be. But yeah. so her parents, like her great grandparents are from India, then her parents, then they moved to Tanz- then her both of her, her parents are from Dar es Salaam. He was born in Dar es Salaam and his family lives there. Um and oh, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, and they're Muslim. So like I guess like she's she's really not like she does she does a lot of things that wouldn't traditionally be allowed, I guess, like by most people's haram. definitions of Islam. Right. Like she drinks a lot. Um she has sex before marriage. But so a lot of people were like, oh, like just the amount of times that like they bring up drinking or whatever. Like she's just trying so hard to be like not like other Muslims and like, oh, I hate everything about this. And so like, why are you even like saying or whatever? And honestly, I in the beginning, I was like, wow, it's like every other page. It's like and then I had a swig of beer and like, oh, I just love gin so much. I love beer. But then like, I don't know, you pointed out like it's kind of like a shared interest of theirs. By the end of the book, though, I realized that it hadn't – like, it was brought up again, like, towards the end, and I realized that it hadn't been mentioned for, like, the entire probably middle third of the book. Yeah. And, like, obviously we can't speak to, like, accurate Muslim representation, but, like, I mean, the first time I read this book, I was like, wow, they talk about alcohol a lot. But I think the only – I think, like, the big reason why it, like, stuck out so much was, like, because it's alcohol. But, like, if they had both been, like – if, like, knitting – was their shared interest and they talked about different types of yarns all the time like I wouldn't be like oh my god like they're you know but I think yeah what's some of the I think like the overall thing that I got from that was that this is this is good like um I don't know like what's the word again like third culture immigrant like it's a good like yeah like being a brown person in Canada slash America but not necessarily very religious Muslim representation but I really enjoyed it overall to be honest I I thought it was really well written like not that much happens like plot wise but it was like she was really good at dialogue I thought she did a great job like portraying these like complex family dynamics without really like villainizing anyone like you can really see all sides and by the end I was like "Mm, Rena's like a little bit of an unreliable narrator (laughs) like I don't know (laughs) yeah because I I struggle a lot of times when there's like kind of like a shitty family because by the end I'm like I still dislike the family at the end but at the end I'm like ah they're all flawed you know like it's not you know there's no one where I'm like ah fuck them like get them out of your life no not at all yeah it was a really I think it was really well done from that perspective and the the audiobook <laughs> oh my gosh that was incredible Listen, if you never listen to any of the other books that we do in audiobook you have to listen to this one audiobook because this didn't start till like halfway through but like they started putting like sound effects and like little yeah. like voice effects. So there'd be like a like a crowd going like, ooh. And then like one time they clinked glasses yeah. and it like did the sound of the clinking. And like honestly, I want Crashing more of that. Like she was like, Mayday, Mayday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want more of that in books. Like audiobook producers take note that was great it only happened like three times that I counted and I was like wow like what a decision to put this in and then not like use it to the fullest extent because I feel like yeah it could have been even just like complete production like over the top it's incredible (laughs) yeah another thing about this book just generally is that I really want to go to Tanzania now like I don't think I ever even google imaged it before have you it's like incredible like I didn't realize that's where like Serengeti National Park is Kilimanjaro National Park Plus, oh, wow. they have, like, beautiful coastlines and, like, architecture, and it's just, like, Holy so shit. incredibly beautiful, right? I can't believe beautiful. I'm in, like, sleep. We've all been – well, I don't know. I, I don't know if anyone else has been sleeping in Tanzania, but I have. That's, like, a dream destination. Like, it's incredible. No, I'm looking at pictures of it. We should I'm just, like, like link shit. to, like, the Google image search results. It's wonderful. Let's go. Respectfully. Respectfully. You know, make sure Respectfully. whenever you're going. <laughs> make sure whenever you're going <laughs> – places that you're respecting local culture culture and customs and keeping beautiful places beautiful there was also the audiobook kept mentioning a bonus pdf of recipes oh yeah how do i access this i don't know like it's a library you're gonna give it to me it's probably when you purchase the audiobook like it gets sent to you Mm. did you think it's only with audiobook i think it's in the book but, like, because mm. the audiobook is not just going to read the recipe out to you, like, that makes sense. they yeah. provide a bonus PDF. Yeah, we should look into that. Because I really, because I was saying to you, like, when are we going to finally make all these recipes that we've been promising to make with different books? Like, I want to make those, like, peppermint cream things from Marrying Winterborn. I want to make the things that they mentioned in this book. Like, oh, you remember? <laughs> remember, like, last year when I finally convinced you guys to get into, like, the bread, the bread pandemic craze <laughs> and, like, make sourdough starters? It was because of this book. <laughs> 
Okay, what do you mean you convinced me to make a sourdough starter? When I when I was like, let's do a sourdough starter, and like we finally did it, and then failed miserably. Yeah. Oh, it's so hard to do it. I know. That's why when he so like when well, let's not jump the gun, but like when he was making it in the book for like the first time without any instruction, and like it seemed like it was gonna be really good. I was like, oh my god, this is so like this would never happen. Like this is like winning the lottery if your first sourdough comes out like really good. <laughs> Like, well, we couldn't even handle the starter. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I know. And neither can neither can uh, Rena in this book, even though she's been doing it for years. Like this, the book starts out with her being like, ah, Brian betrayed me. <laughs> it turns out Brian yeah. is her rye sourdough starter. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love that she names all her sourdough starters and she like like names them after pets. Like, what is it like? Like Clara's the other one and Clara always behaves, but like Brian is naughty yeah. naughty. <laughs> Brian Wait, Rye. we should say okay, so the 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 main couple is Rena and Nadim. So Rena's dad is a developer. Her mom is married to a developer. She has two <laughs> siblings. She's a middle child. She has an older brother who's married and expecting twins and like lives several hours away. But he's like the closest she he's like the one she's closest to, but she doesn't see him that much. Then she has a younger sister, Syra, who she has a complicated relationship with. But can I just say, so I really like the name Syra when I heard it. So I was like trying to look it up and like figure out how it was spelled. And I think I still actually haven't looked it up for this book. I should, but I'm, I'm 95% <laughs> sure that it's got to be spelled S-A-I-R-A. But I first came across C-Y-R-A, which is like a, I forget what, where it comes from, but it's a, it's a saint's name. So there's Saint Syra. And <laughs> she <laughs> was – let me just read you the, the entry from BehindTheName.com. But St. Syra was a 5th century Syrian hermit who was martyred with her companion Marana. So I was like, hmm, that's intriguing, a companion. So I looked it up and it turns out like her and this other rich lady, Marana, scammed everyone into like letting them live on their own. They like lived in this like little hut and like, you know, were hermits or whatever. But basically like they lived totally by themselves without anyone else for like years – with like serpents on the outside and I was like mm, these are historical lesbians if I've ever heard of them <laughs> <laughs> however then I found another website so they were both like I th the one website said that they came from like different rich families and they were just like you know friends who lived together forever <laughs> um but then I found another one that said they were sisters so I was like oh now I don't know what to believe oh, it turns out that the Catholics say that they're just friends the Orthodox say that they're sisters. So this is one time that I'm going to have to go with the Catholics because I just feel like I just feel like the sisters thing is just like trying to like nip the historical, like preemptively nip yeah, the historical like they saw which the wind thing was in blowing. the bud. They're like, yeah. we already made that mistake with, I don't know, St. Magdalene. Like, we're not <laughs> doing that again. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The Orthodox, like, sniffed it on the wind. The Catholics were just like, la di da di la -di <laughs> The Catholics yeah. were still in that whole, like, how do women even have sex with each other? I don't even think that's possible. We shouldn't mention it or they might learn how. <laughs> yeah. Checks out. Cause I'm Church of England, not that far off. And they're yeah. I mean, they were doing. They were talking that since like <laughs> like up to the 1920s. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's not even a fifth century thing. Like that's just like men, <laughs> men in power in the West, at the very least. Nice. So yeah, Syra is a sister. <laughs> not a lesbian though. Not 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 sapphic as far as we know. <laughs> Although she and her ex boyfriend did have threesomes, it's revealed. Yeah. So like she could be. Background on Syra is that her fiance like a year ago cheated on her. It was really like traumatic for her. He cheated on her with his cousin. With his cousin. <laughs> like he was from the Netherlands, and his cousin was visiting from. I think it was that his Dutch cousin was visiting, and she walks in on them having sex, which like. Mm. Um, so Yorin's out. Thyra has a complete breakdown. And we, we don't find out exactly what happens initially, but like apparently she like lived with uh Rena for a while until Rena like kicked her out. And she also like screwed Rena over <sighs> with a book deal. So Rena apparently used to run a successful, a very successful food blog, and then she had a book deal coming up. But then Syra wrote this like viral blog post shitting on food bloggers and like how they're I don't know, like poisoning everyone with unhealthy food. Specifically like comfort food blogger. You know what right. I mean? Like like de like not like the, you know, your vegan food blogger across the mm -hmm. street. Butter is involved, like basically. Yeah. Um, and that it so Syra knew about the blog but didn't know about the book deal. And that inadvertently got Rena's book deal canceled because the publisher was like, you know, the wind is blowing a different way, like whatever. But Rena has never told anyone in her family about the book deal. So they don't know that extent of it. But Syra does know that like she was attacking a food blog like the one her sister has. And now Syra has gotten a book deal 
for her like healthy nutrition whatever and she's also like really pulled her life back together since the whole debacle but and she's dating someone named ashrav ashrav i love him like I think he's my favorite character because he's just like in the background, like completely <laughs> overwhelmed by this like wild family, and he's just like, "Uh, okay." <laughs> you know. So the parents are like, "Oh, like Ashraf's in management," and Rena in her head is like, "Oh, he works at a phone kiosk at the mall, like whatever. Like he's not in management." And I'm like, "All right, Rena, like you're really gonna like look down on him for that." And then at the end, like we find out that Ashraf really does. Wait, have I some don't. Power. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I will. yeah. It's hilarious. Ashraf is actually like controlling the whole like Toronto area. Apparently, he's fucking yeah. Like he's um Nate from Brooklyn Air. Like he runs the like cell phone. System, yeah, apparently. <laughs> he has a secret empire. There's actually like a trap door hidden below the like cell phone kiosk where he runs like the cell phone black market of Toronto. And there's a button for every single person in the U.S. and Canada that all he has to do is push it and like yes, control like, their entire like thing. from <laughs> like up to the president, like the president and like the yeah. Canada has a prime minister, right? That's what it is. I assume that they just copied Britain because, like, everybody else copied Britain I, except you know, for. I feel like it's called the something US. else for some reason. Canadian head of state. Why do I? This, we're sound so stupid right now. <laughs> prime minister doesn't doesn't sound right. His name is Justin it's, Trudeau. Justin Trudeau. Oh, yeah, Justin Trudeau. That, well, the head of state's the Queen, obviously, but like, well, <laughs> obviously, thank you. <laughs> No, you're right. He's the prime minister. Speaking, just speaking mm-hmm. of the queen. So you know how the queen's like, you know, dying. R.I.P. That sounds insensitive, but like, whatever. She's like 98. So she's like taken a step back from like public duties or whatever. So like Prince Charles is like stepping in and he gave like, I don't know, this was like the first time she didn't like open parliament or whatever. So he did it for her. And he made this whole like part of his speech was like, we're going to make things more affordable like for all families in the UK and like working class families and like all of that stuff. <laughs> and he does it from <laughs> he's like sitting on this golden throne with like golden embroidered, like like the fanciest regalia he could possibly be wearing. And like Love the that. wallpaper is like gilded. And I was like, like maybe I'm different, but like I would simply have chosen to do that from literally any other room. Like any <laughs> you could have done that from anywhere else we will make it affordable by giving each person the opportunity to sit on this throne for 30 seconds once a year are we not generous but no pictures magnanimous (laughs) (laughs) anyway that's why prince charles is going to be the last king of the uk so we find out all this stuff about Syrah at at brunch with the weekly brunch with the munji family but before this week's brunch rena gets to meet her hero. And she meets him while coming out into the hallway, like, I don't know, flustered over starter. And her first thought is that he has smallish eyes and a douche beard, which, which she does <laughs> she have a stop beard. judging the beard. Sure, sure. But- Rightfully so. A douche beard is like when it's like just along your jawline and like that's it. Are you like sure? it's, it's yes. Is very- because because on the cover, on the cover, he has a full beard. But a douche beard, I even specifically Googled the term douche beard oh. to ensure that I was thinking of the right thing. It's like the ugliest oh. effing facial hair that a man could possibly have. It's like when it's just along your jawline. If you had a full beard, that would be fine. I didn't know it was an actual definition. I just thought it was like she was saying – I was picturing like a hipstery like look. And then no. she was like, that makes it look like a douche. Therefore, it's a douche beard. Yeah. No. It's 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 the worst. It's the chin strap. Oh. That's what it is. Are you sure? It's, yes. I knew oh. exactly – and it's described that way too where it's just like a thin like – it's not described as a full beard. The cover tricks you into thinking he has a full beard, but it does not. He but does to not. to be fair, I could th- – if that was like really well like – yeah, I don't know actually. No. No. I have there. I have never once – I have seen ugly men with that beard. I have seen conventionally attractive men with that beard. All of them look fucking stupid. <laughs> like it's never – it just – it looks like – I don't even know. Like you're wearing a fucking party hat. Like you missed while shaving. Like you you didn't want to like go the <laughs> just, like, angle of your jaw, your, so you just yeah. like left it there. Like like what? Like yeah, what? Yeah. So he like he's a total player. Like he starts like flirting with her immediately, and he's like, oh, let's go to the pub. And he's carrying a six pack of beer, by the way. And then she's like, hi, okay, like I'm Rena, and he's like, he's Rina, British, too. Rina, he's a British accent. Rena Manji, I can't I can't do it. Rena Manji, you're my boss's daughter. <laughs> I don't know why that's it's Australian. not Australian. <laughs> You went to a British boarding school. 
He's like, shit, I'm supposed to marry you. And she's like, what? That's news to me. <laughs> and he's like, she's like he thought, excuse like, me? Don't. Yeah. Like, you can't tell your dad about this. Like, you can't tell your dad. She's like, be cool, be cool. And she's like, all right. Like, I don't tell my dad literally anything. So, like, you don't have to worry about me. But um, I do find it a bit concerning that you were flirting with me before you knew that it was me who you were supposed to be engaged to, if that makes sense. So Yeah. <laughs> she's like, mm. and later we find out that he did, like, hook up with someone before, like, yeah, like a few weeks ago. Even meeting her. So like yeah, which is never yeah. really explained. But so her parents do this a lot. Like this is like the thirteenth person that they've tried to set her up with or something. No, it's her thirteenth boyfriend. It's only like the sixth person they've tried to set her up with. So she's like used to it, but also not really used to it. This is the first time they've done it with someone hot though. Because hmm, he's she describes him as the brown Captain America, and then she's like, Captain Tanzania? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she goes to brunch and her mom's like we're getting older. Like, who will take care of you when we're gone? And she's like, <laughs> this wasn't Regency England. And mom was no Mrs. Bennett, desperately trying to marry off her children to prevent financial ruin, which I appreciated the Mrs. Bennett recognition. Like, that Mrs. Bennett yes. was, like, the good parent and the right the this vindication. whole time. Yeah, which she was. Her mom's also like, oh, I got you this new perfume that you can wear. And she's like, that's suspiciously generous. Like, why'd you get it? And the mom's like, oh, well, they're longi longi flowers, which – are they grow in a tree in the center of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania? <laughs> um, so if you wear this, it will remind uh, Nadim of his home. And <laughs> and listen, interesting enough, that does become a common refrain where Nadim is like, You remind incredible. me of home. I didn't realize that was why. <laughs> it's hilarious. I don't think it's because he does that, but like, she is like, Actually, this is like really no, good perfume, so I may end, wear it anyway. Yeah, she likes the smell. But at the end, he's like, Oh, how do you just always smell like home? <laughs> and she's like, oh, <laughs> the, the ylang ylang flowers work. <laughs> the ling ylang. <laughs> he is casually like sniffing her at all times. Yeah, it does seem like a bit of an oversight that like reminding him of his beautiful warm home in Tanzania would somehow convince him to want to move to Canada of all places. But then we later find out that he apparently like had a dream to move to Canada as a kid for some reason. <laughs> like can you imagine? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't guess. Know. I guess. I, I, I feel like it's always it's the grass is always greener. I'm not here to shit on Canada. It's just like funny to think of. I don't not funny. Do but, have like, healthcare. Personally, I know. Yeah, I agree on that. But it's just funny. I, it's the same thing as like just. If someone from like France or something was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to go on vacation to the US. Like I'm going to see Louisiana. Like I'd be like, what? Or like, or even, <laughs> like, or, or even like, or even like Philadelphia or something. Like I'd be like, what do you mean? That's like so commonplace. But that'd be the same as like me being like, oh, I'm going to this like random place in France. And they'd be like, why would you want to, you know what I mean? Like yeah. Canada kind of feels like that. It's like the cold. We've north, gone but... to Toronto on vacation, Rachel. No, we, I know we Twice. have. I know. I know you're right. You're Twice. right. <laughs> Right. Like I like I don't know why you're dunking on this as if like we literally like <laughs> they didn't make me want to move there. I'll tell you that much. There's like a whole museum dedicated to just like people who've like gone over the falls and may or may not have survived. <laughs> like Yeah. In like different contraptions. <laughs> like <laughs> it's like a great Canadian pastime to try to like see what like I don't know, the least protection you can have and like still survive with like only mild brain damage going <laughs> over Niagara Falls. Uh. <laughs> um, don't get so, any ideas, Rachel. Yeah. So another constant refrain of Rena's is that she doesn't like gossip because her whole family gossips and that she is not – she's like trying very hard not to be as judgmental as her parents, which is a little ironic because she's like one of the most judgmental characters ever. She's also like, oh, my sister, like I can't deal with her – anxious histrionics or whatever and like mm. but her mental her like head state is constantly just like worst case scenario like total anxiety i'm like this is a bit rich rena like <laughs> she does caught like the whole sister journey is like she's like oh wow like oh, we're definitely, actually definitely. The same. i know I'm, I'm just setting it up i'm just setting it up <laughs> yeah, the beginning. yeah yeah the dad also has the dad is a part of like a gossip group like an Indian mm -hmm. gossip group that's presumably global, filled with like Indian dads, basically, where like he like keeps tabs on his enemies. Oh yeah, but he's like the dad's also like, oh, I don't gossip, and I'm like, all right, you realize that gossiping just means like information sharing, and maybe if all of you had shared some more information up front, none of the like problems in this book could have ever arisen. <laughs> like, yeah, this whole book is like <laughs> XOXO Indian bred Canadian gossip girl. And it's just like if you just 
<laughs> you guys just all could, like the whole plot of this book is like family learns to communicate and eventually yeah. <laughs> to, like be happy. <laughs> yeah. But like as it is right now, they like don't really share like, you know, good news, bad news. Like Rena, like Syra breaks the news about her book deal and Rena's like, well, I know it has to be good news because like I know it can be bad news. Like Maria and Auntie had been admitted to hospice before anyone told me she had cancer. And I was like, oof, like I can relate a little bit too much to that one. <laughs> like that was definitely something that would happen slash has happened. In That's our- something that has happened. Yeah, like multiple times. In our- I literally found out our grandmother had breast cancer from my friend. <laughs> <laughs> never get over that. Our great grandmother never found out she had cancer. Another thing I learned, I don't know how much you want to get into this, but like at some point, uh, so Serena's so like, all right, I've had enough of this family brunch. I need to get home. Like my excuse, she's like, I need to go feed Brian. And the mom's like, what do you mean? Did you get a dog? Like keeping dogs is haram, which I did not know. But then I looked into it and apparently like, you know, it varies like, you know, not every, not all Muslims are like, you can't have a dog. Like it varies like whether you can have it outside or like just not being able to get their mouth on you. But something that seems to be something that everyone agrees on is that cats are excellent and the quintessential household pet cats are like very (laughs) clean you can you can like if a cat has drunk from water you can still like use that water in like you know ceremonial things which just i feel like gives this book just like an automatic like i don't know what do you want to say like plus two but like just plus cat scale scale. bump for sure um it's incredible i love that despite the fact that there are no cat characters <laughs> i would have liked at some point like nadim to get like a kitten or something you know what i mean yeah. and then he just walks on with a little kitten on his like broad shoulders the entire mm-hmm. time like would've i really would have nice. enjoyed that i feel like i just have a very vivid Rina mental too. image of that i feel like him and rena definitely get a kitten or like at the two, end of this book at least two yeah they get like a bonded cool. pair yeah and one of them has little boots so oh, it's like definitely. fancy feet. and one of them has extra thumbs like the cat that we have that for this week. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> then she hangs out with her friends, Marley and Shane. Marley is like her cousin, and I don't think Shane's Shane not is related. related. Shane is a floating pair of eyeballs for me. Like I had no <laughs> Marley is a floating pair of eyeballs, but like also with like brown hair. Shane's like black and eyeballs. his grandmother is from Jamaica, so he like provides them. Oh with yeah, yeah, because she food. makes good yeah. jerk chicken. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about that. There's just yeah. like so much delicious food mentioned yeah. in this book that I like had a lot of trouble keeping track of it all. Also, a lot of these dishes have meat in them, like very explicitly. Like Rena definitely at one point is like, oh, like Syra always wants like she's on a health kick she doesn't put meat in most things like but you have to have meat like you no, know she's what I mean? like she's like i never she's like i'm very particular about what i put in my body i never eat anything with fake sugar fake butter or fake meat and i'm like girl i'm with you on the fake sugar but like fake butter is just margarine and fake meat like ha- it's just like grains and shit and like half the time yeah, it's like worse I, for you than meat so like <laughs> yeah like, i, I guess wrote kind of i wrote a note about that i was like i mean no listen like i'm pretty sure I'm not going to like slander the impossible burger, but I'm pretty sure stuff like the impossible burger probably like has some like additives in it that like probably it's aren't just, great it's for, just you. As bad for you. But as normally, <laughs> but I'm saying like, but yeah. normally, but in terms of like not yeah. having quote unquote natural things, you know, right. whatever, if that's her like main thing. But right. like most things, like black bean burger is literally just like black beans and, and like, like some lentils. And yeah. Like, like, like it's <laughs> not in any, I was like, it's probably better for right. you, frankly. And like the whole margarine slander, like are we really going to listen to the 1800s butter lobby? Like, come on. It's the butter lobby since time immemorial, since the margarine came out. Y'all, the I mean, seriously, did you know that butter, like the butter lobby went so hard in the US and like the second half of the 20th century that like at one point, many, many states had a law that like margarine had to be like dyed pink or something or dyed (laughs) a color other despite the fact that by the way the reason butter is yellow is because it's dyed just letting you know like most butter colors i'm saying but most butter color is like not natural like there's yeah Yeah. but yeah it was like you have to differentiate it from from Mm -hmm. like butter and Mm -hmm. like oh it was like some state like ohio or somewhere like i don't know like some state like literally had that law on the books until like 2005 (laughs) and like i get it like there's a lot of like conflicting things out there about margarine like it may or may not have like very small amounts of trans fat like whatever and like i don't know the jury's still out on that but like the number of people that i've heard say things like oh like margarine is like one molecule away from being plastic like what does that even mean think about that for one second plastic is a polymerized like whatever the fuck it's nothing it's not at all similar what does that even mean also like yeah i don't know like hydrogen is or whatever like 
hydrogen is like two molecules away from being water. So like, what what are you saying there? Like what? Like, <laughs> it's like I feel like it's like parallel to like how like I don't know humans are like not had shared ninety six of their DNA with like a right. banana or something. Yeah, exactly, you know what I mean? Like exactly. we're like oh it's like okay like but I'm not like no but they're actually close not at to all being similar. a banana. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. I think 96 is maybe a little high for bananas, but it's something absurdly high, like the similarity to like fruit. <laughs> yeah. So basically like eat whatever you want, but like don't buy into the butter hype. If you if you like margarine, like I'm I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that like they're both equally bad or that good there's for a you lot in worse like different ways that you could right, be eating. Right. Like, eat everything in moderation. <laughs> <laughs> Do whatever you want. You got one life. <laughs> yeah. But so she's hanging out with her friends. And Sh- Shane, Sean, Shane, Shane brings up that he's been seeing this guy who works for a local like production, I don't know, local, like a production company who's running a contest for home Food TV. cooks, Food TV, running a contest for home chefs. But the only catch is that it has to be like they want like families. So it has to be like, you know, husband and wife, fiance, fiancés, like it could be like mother, daughter, brother, sister, but like it has to be families. And the prize is like a scholarship to a night school. And at this point, like we found out that Rena works in finance and she's 31. So she's been working in finance presumably for like 10 years ish. And she hates her job. It's like super stressful. She doesn't like it. And then like I found – and then when she was like, oh, I, I could finally enroll in night school, like if I get the scholarship, I'm like, so you work in this like shit finance thing? without even like the huge amount of money that you normally comes with finance like why are yeah. you doing this but then we learned that like she so she has just a community college degree so it's not like a it's not she's not like an investment banker she's like works in like i guess the finance department yeah and she's been laid off like three times so presumably she hasn't had the opportunity to like work herself up yeah but this made me just be like you're really like this this was when like when she was judging ashrav for like working at a mall kiosk i was like really girl like you're really gonna like Miss Rena, not judgmental Mungie over here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's specifically the, the scholarship is like ten thousand dollars to like this institute, and she wants to take like the artisanal bread class. Yeah, there, which would be which cool, but it doesn't seem like she really needs it. Like, it seems like she's already like like why she would the prize the for max. being the best cook be cooking classes? It doesn't really make sense. I guess take it to the next level. Well, because yeah. it's like I don't know. I, I feel like it's like I mean it's not the same thing, but it's like you know go to this cooking institute in Paris. You know, like even if you're a good cook, like yeah. you can always like get better. And like this is supposed to be like super prestigious, like a super prestigious thing in Canada. Mm-hmm. I don't know whether it's actually real, but like, yeah, I don't, I, I don't even remember the name. Um, but yeah, I call it artisanal bread school. So like yeah, I don't, yeah, I didn't write down the name. Supposed <laughs> to go to the bread boutique the bread bordeaux i don't know um <laughs> so she's like ah oh, fuck and then the next day she finds out over zoom that she's been laid off again which like she goes on and on about how it's like so terrible that she got laid off like on zoom versus in person and like her friend says that too and i'm like i i don't know like if i feel like she's sad because she doesn't get to steal her favorite office supplies which i relate to <laughs> oh so i thought she was saying like her office supplies that belonged to her and i was like really there's never gonna give it back to you she was like i wanted to like take some pens or something yeah. i'm like i get it <laughs> Oh, I thought it was like her actual office supplies, like that, like her like personal effects that she was just like never gonna get to get. So she goes to drink her sorrow the way at the Sparrow, which is like her local dive bar that she likes, um, and she wears flip flops. That's important. And who does she <laughs> run into there? But Nadim, who's also really glum for some unknown reason that we don't know yet, and they start chatting, and she's basically like, "I'm not gonna." She's like at this point decided not to tell anyone that she got laid off, like not even her best friend who lives like two hours away or something and she's like I have to keep to myself because the last time I got laid off like my parents just like insinuated that it was my fault and my dad is always trying to pressure me to come work for the family business and I really don't want to do that so they like agree not to you know say why they're both upset and they just kind of like get drunk and like you know are hanging out and they bond over beer even though beer is pee water and just just terrible disgusting I do I do understand that like I will say that like pouring beer like from the tap is very fun. They have like a you can like you get to like learn how to do that at the Guinness factory. There's like a Mm. special like technique. Yeah. And I was very good at it. Like I was the best one in my (laughs) tour group. (laughs) Okay. Uh, I have a video. I like I have a video. I was very good at it. And that was fun. So I like that's the only thing that I can (laughs) give them. Otherwise, like bad taste, like gin and beer, the worst two of the worst ones. Yeah, in my opinion. Awful. I mean, gin is is gin really worse than any other hard alcohol? Like, I wouldn't want to sip it, but like in a mixed drink or like as a shot. Are they sipping it? 
Are they sipping it here? No, I think they have like book? a mixed, like some sort of like mixed drink. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I can't have this debate. <laughs> they, they bond and she gets really drunk because she like, oh, she took some cold medicine. She had like a sinus headache. So she took some cold medicine. So it hits her like really hard. Which I, did, I did not know that was a thing, but apparently. I it think is. it's the, the combination of like sci- like cold medicine yeah. and alcohol. And That's he's like. Like, he finds out that she got the ingredients for – what is it again? Like, Procora's or – I don't know. I don't know. They go up to make – he's like, oh, let me, like, help you. And they go up to his place to make some food and also drink more gin for some reason. And basically, like, she tells him about the contest and he's like, oh, my gosh, that's so cool. Like, we have to do it. She's like, well, I didn't tell you that it requires two people. Like, we would have to pretend to be, like, engaged for some reason. Even though I feel like they could pretend to be yeah. brother and sister. But that would be, like, harder to fake, I guess. No, that would be weird. I will say we kind of we kind of compounded these two things. It's like when she's wearing flip-flops and, like, because she, mm-hmm. she gets locked out of her apartment and he, she's, like, sitting outside her apartment mm-hmm. and he finds her before this. And she's always getting locked out of her apartment, which I'm like, girl – well, she fakes Sweetie. it later. But on. she has, she does, she is responsibly like, she does give like spare keys to like every single person yeah. in her life so she can get back in the apartment. But, um, yeah, so it's that, then he finds her, he comes in, he is like, you have a bag of bread, like, and you're wearing flip flops. Like, are, like, how did you check all my buttons? Like, for you're my dream me. girl. And then the next day she gets laid off and then she goes to get drunk and then they mm-hmm. bond. But so, just a few things while they're in the bar before they go home to make, whatever delicious treats they're going to make she first of all she's like do you lit like he's like super muscular so she's like do you lift like just to do it just to look good or like do you actually like do it because like with your body do you actually like, do something physical with it and i'm like and he like plays sports or whatever but i'm like rena people are allowed if if someone wants to lift weights just to like get certain muscles they're allowed to do that like stop yeah, judging again them. rena not judgmental munji out here like yeah. <laughs> judging uh, the hell out of everything. she's a very unreliable narrator <laughs> but then also he's talking he's like yeah i play soccer but he calls it football because he's like british or whatever and he you know makes a crack about how like americans are dumb for calling it soccer Mm -hmm. or like whatever and she comes in with that soccer vindication Mm -hmm. about how it used to be called soccer football and britain originally called it soccer up until like the 1970s and then like they started switching they switched to football because it was too soccer was too american because americans Mm -hmm. were using soccer so like we're actually soccer's the og and like football's wrong sorry yep Yep. Mm -hmm. sorry to break it to you the thing that the americans did do so there was like lots of different kinds of football like i guess like universities started like making it up in the 1800s so there was like rugby football which was rugger there was association football which was soccer and then the americans made their own and they just called it football and the in the like the UK call, uh, called it like gridiron or something. So it is kind of bold of the US to be like, our football is going to be like the football. We're not going to like come up with another <laughs> nickname for it. Like, I will say that. <laughs> but yeah. But like that wasn't, I feel like our football wasn't until like the 20th century. Sure. Like, I feel like it wasn't until later. But I guess they were like, you know, we've, we've like kind of exhausted this by now. This is like the last one. We already have soccer for the other one. So we might as well call it soccer. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Or, or we might as well call it football. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. But yeah, so they, yeah. so they r- roll up to the apartment and they're like, haha. He's like, oh, I'm just going to film you just for fun. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he like comes over and like they cook it. And then and then she's like, and that's the last thing I remember. Yeah. She wakes up in his bed, which happens to be her childhood bed because like he got all his furniture from her parents. (laughs) Yeah, which is funny. And she's like, maybe I should have kept this bed because it seems like a lot sturdier than mine. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Wasn't she like she's like, yeah, one time like I was having sex with a boyfriend and like she has like an Ikea bed or something. And she's like, it like fell apart while they were having sex like it broke and like he was like all like he took it as like an insult to his like oh i don't yeah something (laughs) instead of like just like the bed being shitty i don't know we also find out like because okay we find out that nadim was born in dar es salaam but then went to school in the uk so she's like so why do you have a british accent and he's like well i tend to pick up dialects and accents easily he's like so give me a month in canada and i'll probably be matching your a's and your boots I'm like, all right, so you're pretentious. Like, there's no reason for you to be like. Nadim is like the girl that goes to like Paris for two weeks on vacation. Yes, and comes back exactly. And like, oh, we, oui, we, oui. oh, sorry. I just. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, he, I, I, 
it's unclear how young he was when he went to British boarding school. So like that I can forgive. Like if he was like, you know, like nine to 12 years old and like starts talking with a British accent, like sure. But like if he just went there for like high school, I, I don't know, like – do what you want, yeah. but like, don't start saying a boot, man. Like, there's no, there's no need for that. And it's Nobody says for. a boot <laughs> except for we learn, like, her friend Amira. Um, and she Amira's says it too. Boyfriend. Oh, I, but I, I, the only place I like really heard it in the audiobook, mm-hmm. um, like super, like the full Canadian like accent was with like Amira's boyfriend Duncan, and I really appreciate it. It's that. because Rena's an unreliable narrator. Because when Nadim is like, "I'll be matching your boots," she's like, "I do not say a boot," and he's like, "You definitely do. Like you definitely a boot do." <laughs> so it's just because like she won't admit it in herself. Yeah. Anyway, then she's sick. She like wakes up. She like sneaks out. He's like slept on the couch, and I respect that he slept on the couch. But also, I'm like, there was only one bed, and you didn't take it. <laughs> unbelievable how dare you <laughs> he also like this night starts like randomly calling her sunshine and this is like the one time that this nickname out of nowhere for some reason like doesn't feel cringe even though it does get overused almost immediately but like it's, i think it's because he's supposed to be like such a natural flirt so it just feels kind of like i don't know he's like just turning on the old charm and it's like you expect it to be out of nowhere kind of thing like i don't know i'm gonna be honest i I have no memory of ever hearing him call her sunshine. Oh, they, they, they're they making potato budgias or nylon budgias, which also look really fucking good. I want to make them. Anyway, she's sick and she's like, she's like, oh, I've run out of like Jane Austen adaptations with Gwyneth Paltrow. And I would like to know how many of those are there? Because I thought just there Emma. was just the one. <laughs> yeah. Are there more at it? It's like, has Gwyneth Paltrow just somehow like made her way through the whole gambit of Jane Austen <laughs> And like I just didn't know. Um, there's Emma. It's just Emma. All right. Well, <laughs> if somebody knows something that I don't know, like yeah. if there's like some secret like tape of like Pride and Prejudice and with Gwyneth Paltrow like plays <laughs> Mr. Darcy, like let me know. <laughs> she has like an interaction with Syra that I didn't write anything about because I don't think it's important. Basically, you, all you have to know is that these scenes with Sy- these scenes with Syra is that Syra keeps trying to like be nice to her and like establish a relationship and like Rena is like what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And that's it. And then she's hanging out with Shane and Marley again. And Shane is like, don't tell anyone. But like the boy I'm seeing saw your name on the list of finalists. Woohoo. And she's like, what? I didn't even know that we submitted the video. And then she like texts Nadim and she's like texting Nadim this whole time. And she's like, oh, I can't help but send flirty texts to him. And she has her ringer is a bagpipe like oh my thing. god and i listen i fully appreciate the comedy of her having the bagpipe <laughs> text tone like i think that's funny but also like why the fuck does she have her ringer on like she's 31 does anyone under the age of 50 keep their ringer on on the reg because she has it on all the time she has it on like she's hanging yeah. out with other people i feel I like if there's like one time to have it on like silent or well, buzz listen, i thought like everyone kept their phone on silent like fully but then i learned from like you and tiktok that so many people have it on vibrate for some godforsaken reason well i have my phone like, but like vibrate is different inducing thing vibrate is, is different, different than having your ringer on it's different like, your but ringer it's on is a whole like, other ball game your ringer on is a whole other ball game also, your phone vibrates all the fucking time when we're sitting at the table the whole Only table vibrates okay but it still it. vibrates Right, but that doesn't matter because I'm like already on it, so it's not as like disruptive, you know. It is to me. It's very disruptive to me. <laughs> yeah, well, th- that's how yours is twenty four seven. So you're full of it anyway. Oh, another thing about the like interaction with Sarah. Well, she threw the sourdough starter out the window. That's just egregious. I just want to put that out there. Um, <laughs> we also get some shit talking of the Shaw family, which we learn is like a long standing rivalry that their dad has with this like random like other developer Salim Shah who has a daughter like about their age named Jasmine Shah so keep that in mind um judging them as a long time family pastime and it's unclear if they like actually know each other personally or they just like judge them from afar whatever like they don't, they don't know them he know Mr. Munji knows Salim Shah but but they don't know the but family yeah they don't know like Jasmine it's just anything. like a like <laughs> they don't know where enemies but like I know but their enemies. cousin is obsessed with her oh well um, it's not their Jasmine, cousin. It's like, like an influencer. No, it's like Cyrus' boyfriend's girlfriend, like brother's girlfriend's cousin or something. But yeah. Okay. So 
she's like feeling better from being sick and Nadim comes over and suddenly he's like clean shaven and his hair is shaved close to his head. And I was like, oh my God, like she was so fucking mean about his hair and beard to this man. That he, and he like <laughs> wanted to impress her so badly that he like shaved his fucking head. And she feels her first instinct is like, oh my God, I kind of miss the hair and beard. I'm like, all right, well, maybe you shouldn't have been like outwardly calling it a douche beard. No, like, no, no, no. I think well, she doesn't outwardly call it a douche beard. No, she says she misses the hair, his long hair, but she's specifically is like I don't miss the beard. <laughs> oh, okay. And then she's like, did he join the Marines? Like, does Canada have Marines? Could Tanzanians join? <laughs> like <laughs> all valid questions. Right? Yeah. Like, I don't know the answers to any of those. <laughs> so he's like, I have something to tell you. And she's like, oh my God, what? And he's like, So before I met you, I was hooking up with a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> it was very casual, but she gave me lice. <laughs> And she's like, are you fucking kidding me? And he's like, well, you slept in my bed, so you may have lice. So she's like, going to have to not check your hair. My head. Yeah. Just like he obviously has no idea how to actually check for lice because he's like, I'm not sure. And I feel like you'd definitely be sure if there were like nits or not. Like, <laughs> Yeah, no. Somehow this scene manages to be incredibly sensual. Like, I don't know how Farah Heron does it. I don't know how she manages to make a lice checking scene like sexy, like foreplay, but like she does. Yeah. No, I agree on this. Like, how is it sexy? But like, I don't understand. Like every time the lice thing comes up, Rena is like literally like no exaggeration. She's like, this is the lowest moment of my life. Like this is the <laughs> worst and most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me. And I'm like, girl, like he's offering to check it for you. He gave it to you. The person who's checking it like gave it to you. So he has it too. Like I just don't understand where the like intense like – also if that's the lowest moment in your life, like I'm very jealous. Like what? Like <laughs> I don't know like – as someone I don't who's had lice before, it's not that bad. <laughs> I have bad. not had lice. However, when you guys got lice, I left for summer camp like that same day when that whole shit went down and the camp was on an island and they checked you for lice before getting on the island. So I had to spend like a very nerve wracking like eight hour car ride and like head check worrying that I was going to get sent home and or have to go to Vermont with like my friend's parents instead of going to camp. <laughs> like, <laughs> but it was fine. I don't know why we didn't get like mutual head searching. Like I don't know. Because he shaved Dude. his head. I know. But like why did he why, – why was that a plot choice that was made? Because I feel like I, it's, it's, it's payback for Rena being judgmental about his like overall hipster look I feel like. I think, yeah, I think it was like, Farah was like, listen, I made him look like a douche. Now he's got to look like a normal dude. Now he's got to not look like a douche. So uh, like this is the lice is the plot device that gets us there. It's like her comeuppance for roasting his hair. You keep saying that. Like, I, it, why does she, why does she need karma? Like, is it really like what? Well, she's like, oh, the like pang of attraction I felt is gone. Like, no, it's not. The pang of attraction is gone because he just told her like he gave her lice. Like I just feel like if anyone's like, yeah, I gave you lice, like that would kind of turn off the juices <laughs> for a little bit. You know, the water spout is is being cut off for now. God, yeah. They agree to um do the contest together and pretend oh, to be yeah. engaged. Well, because they already like drunkenly submitted it. So yeah, they, they drunkenly like, submitted. Made it through, they made it to the yeah. finals, yeah. and so she's In like, oh, round. like I guess we should we should do it. And they have a specific thing where they're like, oh, are we friends now? And this is something that pops up like a lot in books and movies and stuff. Like, has that ever happened in real life? Write in. Have you ever explicitly asked someone like, are we friends now? Like, I didn't like I feel like all of my friendships have just been like, oh, we've been hanging out a lot. OK, I guess yeah. we're friends. <laughs> yeah. Know? Like labeling it. Yeah. I, listen, I would love to have those types of conversations. I am far too chicken shit to ever initiate them but like <laughs> like i'm not judging them but i'm just like i've i feel like that pops up a lot and i've never heard of that happening in real life i guess it's like if you're enemies with someone initially and then you have to like just yeah it doesn't make sense yeah i would enemies. never like define that yeah then she has a conversation with her mom and her mom is like listen like you know that we know that Nadim, we set you up with Nadim. However, the situation is a little more dire than that because your dad got scammed by his like architect. And Rena's like, you mean the last guy you tried to set me up with? <laughs> <laughs> and this is after her mom is like, oh, I'm such a good judge of character. I can just look right at someone and tell if they're lying. Like I told your dad not to trust him. Rena's like, yeah, you set me up with him at the same time. <laughs> like, <laughs> But yeah, the mom is like, the family needs you. And she's like, what is this fucking godfather yeah. shit? Like, what do you mean? 
So my parents have finally found a use for me as a bargaining chip in a business deal. It almost made me feel valued. <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost. Yeah. So basically, like, Nadim's dad invests in the company and the Munji project in exchange for, like, Nadim being given a job and potentially marrying Rina. Yeah. So that's why it, like, needs to work out. But, like, the dad doesn't know that they know. Like, the mom's like, don't tell your dad because, like, he, he doesn't want you to know. In the middle of this conversation – who knocks on the door but Nadim because he's been invited for dinner along with Rena's other friends. And he like – the mom opens the door and he's like, oh, I'm just here to uh, uh, borrow some nail polish. So he says nail varnish because he's pretentious. But <laughs> – British. <laughs> yeah. And they have to like – you know, Rena's like, oh, like to label your keys like I showed you like in the hallway, blah, 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 like whatever. So when he finally comes over for dinner, like – so they like film their second video along with Marley yeah. and Shane. Yeah, Shane. That's why they're all having dinner because like Shane is like knows production things and Marley is a fashionista. So she like styles them or whatever. And then they do the second video and it has like super high production value. Yeah, like she wears like two small shoes that Marley gave her. So her feet are really in pain later. And um, Nadim is like, I can give you a foot rub, but like. I don't want it to be weird because of like, you know, my thing. And she's like, what? Like, what thing? I'm intrigued. And he's like, you know, my thing. And she's <laughs> like, what? And he's like, I literally told you so many times. Like, how do you not know? Do you not remember me telling you that I, I was your soul, that you were my soulmate, pun intended, when you were wearing bare feet? <laughs> um, and and she's like, why did you, by the way, like, why did you say that? You wanted to borrow nail polish earlier. No, she's like, oh, that's why. Because he's like, he he's like, like looks I was at looking her. at your feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the first thing that pops into my head. He's like, you have very nice arches. Yeah. <laughs> Which, listen, I have been told that as well. Not by someone with a confirmed foot fetish, but someone with a suspected foot fetish. <laughs> I've been told I have nice feet by multiple people. I feel like a good rule of thumb is that if anyone notices feet in general, like just in, you know, even if you're just sitting there and they like look over at someone walking by and they're like, oh, they have nice feet. Like definitely. But it's the most common, like, I don't, what's the better word than fetish? Like that almost feels, that just feels like inherently like kink shamey, like a, a I don't foot, know. like someone who's attracted to feet which is a lot of people apparently it's the most common thing because of that like brain wiring thing that i think we touched on before although i will say the one exception to that foot fetish rule is i feel like um in my personal experience like dancers like i've been told oh sure i no, i've been told i have nice feet just in general but i've also been told by like because i was friends with a lot of dancers in college that like oh you have like nice feet for like dancing because you have like high yeah you have arches that's and, like, sure your feet are flexible. that could be an exception yeah but i'm gonna be honest like as someone who and i would admit to it if i had it but personally i don't like feet don't do anything for me I could not tell you what, what is a nice foot. Like maybe if we could picture like a gross foot, you know, if you have like gangrene or like really, really hairy, like Bigfoot feet or something, like that would be gross. I've been watching. I've been like, watching what is a, a nice lot of um, foot? <laughs> a lot of ingrown toenail removal videos. Sure, sure. They're like pimple popping, like that kind of sure. video. Like so, like pretty. I can picture the one extreme of like the opposite of like yeah. you know bad. We find out later that the reason to deem has a foot fetish is because like as a kid he was like forced to sit at the front of a um performance and so like his his like line of vision was like no the the these women's feet i know rachel but i'm i'm giving the in-text back so it was his line of vision was on like the women's like feet and they were like they had like you know bells and chain they're like beautifully adorned like as they were dancing and he was like oh my god like that like i was hooked like after that day the reason is definitely his brain wiring that was just like his sexual awakening ref yeah but maybe (laughs) that like it that like trigger that like tripped it you know what i mean like it could have just been latent the whole time you know what i mean maybe everybody has the potential for a foot fetish you just need the right activation i don't think so but maybe so yeah so he has foot fetish and he offers so she's like oh she's like all right well i don't fucking care like as long as you don't make it weird i won't make it weird so he gives (laughs) her a foot rub and it's like really not at all like even that like sexual it's like it's sexual. just like she's just like oh my god like my feet feel so much better and he's like you have really nice feet and i love rubbing your feet and i'm like this seems like a great symbiotic relationship not yeah. weird for anyone i don't know what you people are complaining about on good benefits <laughs> everybody <laughs> hurts, hurts nobody, nobody. <laughs> well yeah and i i love him like i can just imagine his internal model we don't get his mo- in- internal yeah. thing it's like all in rena's the whole time but i can just imagine when she's like she's wearing like heels that are too small like that's why her feet hurt and i can just imagine him being like in his head like how dare these you these like 
shoes hurt her beautiful feet like how dare they imprison her feet in this way (laughs) yeah seriously and i could just see him like in the middle of the night like taking these shoes and like burning Burning them them. (laughs) (laughs) i was kind of thinking that too i was like why are why did she like make her wear these shoes like she's the only reason the shoes weren't even on camera it was just like to make her a little bit taller but like she already has to stand on a step stool to knead bread apparently (laughs) so like which yeah. seems like an oversight because we later learned that her dad owns this building and that's why she was able to get like a cheaper lease there. So like why couldn't he – he could have had like custom made like lower countertops or something. I no, don't know. because like, she didn't she didn't live there like from the yeah, opening. But like she just like eventually like wanted to move out. why is he not out. making units that are like – I feel like he's making standard units and she's just very short. Yeah, I guess. Even – I mean our co- countertops like I'm tall but like – I don't know. I can imagine like wanting like a few inches up to like make it easier to need. Like I feel like I have to bend my arms oh, a lot yeah. to like need bread. You yeah, know what sure. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, I can sure. imagine a short stool being helpful even in our Oh, kitchen. I was going to say I would like it higher, like a few inches up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. A short stool, like standing on a stool. No, no. I mean the countertop being higher. So I don't have to bend over as much. (laughs) Well, I mean, we're also like five inches apart. So like, I guess the sweet spot is somewhere in the middle for for Canada. True. Yeah. They're like talking about that. And then they're like talking about what kind of food they're going to have, you know, for the videos. And she's like, not fusion, right? And he's like, no, fusion just means dumbed down. But I'm like, okay, but like, isn't your entire, like, what about the Gujarati Indian Tanzanian food? Like, how is that not fusion? Like, your entire, like, family food is – like, fusion – I get that fusion has a negative connotation, but when I Googled, like, like the Gujarati Indians in Tanzania, one of the first things that comes up is a food blog about this person being like, yeah, like, to me, fusion isn't a dirty word because, like, my entire culture's food is, like, essentially fusion. I'm like, all right, like – I think they are you- it in <laughs> – like they mean it in like the they mean western it in like context, a chicken like korma making, shepherd's pie or something right like, like making it palatable to white people right. basically like it's i feel like it is a little bit different when it's like a legitimate blending of cultures versus like sure but then you just need a different word but like i don't yeah. know i was a bit i was like mm, you're really going to tell me that like tradition tradition ah traditional indian cooking had like a ton of kasava and like whatever like and they talk about like how his housekeeper used to make him like fresh mani after school <laughs> like just like throughout this, it's just like little things where she's like, oh, you're a trust fund kid. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm not a trust fund kid. And she's like, did you have a trust fund? And he's like, well, technically, but like. And she – well, she also – she knows he's a trust fund kid because, like, at one point, Cy- at one of Syra's visits, she came over and she's like, the only thing I've managed to, like, find about him is that, like, this picture of, like, him with, like, all these, like, rich preppy people on, like, a yacht and he has, like, a popped collar in the picture and, like, even looks even more like a douche than – that's like a little bit later on, but like now he's like he's honestly a little shady. Like if anyone does this in real life, I feel like it's inherently shady. He's like, he's like, I don't want you to know about my past. Like, don't ask around about me. And Rena's like, I'm not much of a gossip because I'm better than everyone else. And I'm like, well, maybe <laughs> this would have been a good situation to be a gossip, Rena, because yeah. it's just information gathering. Well, she's also what I don't really get about it. She's like, because they agree, like they have a whole conversation. And they're like, we're not gonna like look in like. We're not going to talk about our past. Like our friendship mm-hmm. is just going to be in the present or whatever. And she like views this as a quid pro quo in some – in like a certain case because she's like, oh, I have like secrets. Like she's constantly like, I have secrets I'm keeping from him. Right. And the secrets are basically just that like she has like depression and so sometimes and like- have like – has like depression spirals. And like, yeah, one time when she got laid off, she like – was like abusing alcohol for a few months but like hasn't I thought since the only, then yeah i thought the only secret she wanted to keep from him was that she got laid off like that was like the big thing that she wasn't no well no but she eventually tells him that yeah. and then still afterwards she's like oh i have a secret yeah. from him and like before like in the culmination she's like oh i have something to tell you like mm-hmm. i have depression like sometimes i've been on medication and i mean like listen i get that like obviously mental health still has a stigma but like I just feel like it's not the same. No, he – because he has, like, so much information on her family background and she has literally nothing about him. He, he knows her entire so family. so much from her. Like, there's, yeah. like – what he keeps from her has the potential to, like, you know, almost end their relationship. Like, right. Which, like, I just feel like, yes, I have depression, but I'm, like, managing it is not – No. 
the same thing. No. You know? Especially when he has access to like basically her entire history and like if he wanted, he could look through her entire family photo, like childhood, you know, like whatever. Yeah. It's like presented as like something like like she's keeping secret, like equal secrets. And I'm like, ah. Yeah. But she also like catastrophizes a lot. Like that oh, is definitely. her personality is that she's constantly like worst case scenario. Definitely. So like it is in character for her to like make those things be the same even though they're not the same. Right. Yeah. So – so Nadim is invited to family brunch this week, but Rena will not be there because she's visiting her aforementioned best friend, Amira, who lives like far away. But she realizes morning of that Brian, the starter, is not doing that well. She needs someone to take care of him. So she's like, oh, who can I get to do this last minute? I know. I'll go over barefoot to Nadim's and ask him to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and it works. He like, does not put shoes on. <laughs> yeah. I love it. And I love that she's like, she's like, Brian's not a pet, but like she treats him like a pet. She's like, I need someone to like take care of him while yeah. I'm out of town. Like this is Brian. He's pretty young. <laughs> like, <laughs> And she tells him like what to do, which includes like, you know, to throw out half the starter every day so it doesn't get like totally out of hand. Um, and then she goes off and visits Amira and it's a nice visit. No, no, no. She it- talks with her dad first. She like has a brief meeting with her dad before that where her dad's like, I've heard some gossip that Nadim has a shady past. Will you spy on him for me? And she's like, hang on. You want me to get engaged to this man and you also want me to spy? Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, and she's also yeah. like. He like asks her her he asks her what she thinks about Nadim and she's like so shook that he wants to know like her thoughts. She's like, wow, he's never done this before. Yeah. He's never asked for my opinion. Yeah, because she's yeah, she's like always like, oh, my dad only cares about his business and like he doesn't want to know anything about my life. But I was like, he seems like very like involved in your love life like this whole time like she wait wait she also i just want to she also like keeps calling nadim instead of calling him like a player or like flirty or like oh, any yeah. sort of like that thing she keeps calling him a rake yeah she's like he's very rakish he's such a rake and she like says it out loud and in her head and i just love it and like, she, like, like, he's, he's like he's like confused by that term and she's like what do you mean like how could you be confused which like i would not I, Two years ago, I don't think I would have known what that meant, like, frankly. No. Like, historical I don't know. romances are the only reason I'm pretty that, sure like... I had to look that up the first <laughs> yeah. time. Like, when I read The Viscount Who Loved Me for the first time, I had, like, there were a yeah. bunch of things that I had to look up. And she's like, get with the program. Like, use some context clues. Context clues. This is Canada. Like, Excuse- come on. Like, are you kidding me? Like, you haven't read all of Lisa Claypass's like, backlist? Like, get- what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? Like, excuse me. Get some yeah. Joanna Lindsay on your fucking bookshelf, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's living the lifestyle, so like he's he's already got it. He is the rake. Yeah, the reformed rakes make the best husbands. Yeah. Wow. So (laughs) not in real life. (laughs) Yeah. So she goes to visit her friend. It's all it's a nice visit, except that Amira kind of has like an intervention and is like, "Your life's shit." And Rena's like, "Yeah, I know my life's shit." Which like her life's kind of shit, but it's not really that shit. Like, yeah, she lost her job. That sucks. But like. I think she mostly calls her out and this is like what Rena has to learn. She like calls her out for like isolating herself and for like not accepting support. She's her- like, I get that you have problems with your family, but like, like the reason you're struggling so much is because you don't have like you're not allowing other people to help you mm-hmm. and like you're not like giving people space for you to lean on them. Her whole catchphrase like throughout this, she says it so many times, is like deflect and distract, deflect and distract. Like anytime someone tries yeah. to bring up like an uncomfortable topic, she'll just like try to change the subject or like, I don't yeah. know, like run away or like whatever. And it's funny. Yeah. And later on, her brother is like, <laughs> you can't like you keep trying to pretend like like deal with problems with pretending like they're not there. Like you keep your head in the sand, but you know you can't breathe like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah and Amira calls her out too. She's like, don't fucking de- deflect. <laughs> yeah. No, what? Amira in this conversation is like, you're like the dog in the house that's on fire. That's like, this is fine. Yep. <laughs> it's like perfect, perfect inclusion of a meme. I know exactly yeah. what this is. Like, chef, wonderful. Well done. <laughs> yeah. So we get the only the only kind of important thing for this. So like the reason Amira kind of pops up so much is that she does have her own book. This isn't like a series, mm-hmm. but like Amira and Duncan, who's her like boyfriend, they have a book. I think it's The Chai Factor, and I haven't read it because I haven't been able to find the audiobook anywhere. So they do have a book, but it's like it's not 
listed as a series. Like it's not yeah. connected. In but it was way. like very clear, like immediately that this was like a couple that we like should previously be familiar with mm-hmm. and like had gotten their own story because it was like, I forget what, but it was just like little details. Yeah. But the important, the only, the sort of like tidbit of information to remember for the future from this visit is that um, Duncan's parents have like a mini farm mm-hmm. and they've like invited her to like, you know, take some goat milk and fresh eggs whenever she wants. So like, just keep that in mind. Unpasteurized goat milk is in demand. You can get a good price for that on the food blogger market. I (laughs) mean, it's true. Like you, she wants to talk about, like she's been laid off. Like girl, this is your side hustle. Like you want to know how much fucking (laughs) money you can make from unpasteurized milk? Like that, that contraband, like what was Mm -hmm. it? You were telling me about like that, those people that tried to do that with their cows and then the feds came and like dumped out all the milk onto their driveway. And like people were scrambling on the ground trying to, who was telling me that? It's a Shit's Creek episode. (laughs) I don't remember if I ever told you. No, there was literally like someone was I it was like something they were like, Yeah, I read an article about unpasteurized milk and it was like someone yeah, someone was like trying to like run run it out of like their like business and people would like line up and then like the feds came and like just like poured it all out. People were like, No, no Oh my god. Um <laughs> another piece of gossip that we forgot to mention that is very relevant is that Jasmine Shaw of the aforementioned Shaw family got apparently abandoned by her fiance in Egypt recently and it was like so serious that she had to be like bailed out and like you know she couldn't get out of the country couldn't get back home yeah um so keep that allegedly Just allegedly keep that in mind. so Nadim like when she comes back she comes to pick up Brian I pick up Brian and he's like uh uh don't come in don't come in I'll bring him up to you 10 minutes I just need 10 minutes and her <laughs> her, her like first thought is like oh my god why have I trusted anyone with something that I loved like why would I trust anyone <laughs> <laughs> it's like all right all right fine but like just just keep in mind you just gotta keep cool keep in mind and she walks in and brian's fine <laughs> but brian has had 16 puppies <laughs> he has 16 other jars because he's like i know you told me to scoop out half the starter and throw it away every day but i just couldn't bring myself to do it because your bread is so good and it's liquid gold i just couldn't do it so he's I like i wanted to keep it in jars so I could, like <laughs> trick you to teach me how to make bread and then I could make it myself <laughs> and then every day because all the jars would double I had to dump out half of it from every jar and then now I have 16 jars and it's just getting out of hand and eventually <laughs> I'm just gonna be drowning in starter and I don't know what to do <laughs> she's like you're so fucking stupid <laughs> she's like you first of all you could have just put it in a bigger bowl like second <laughs> of all there's like many things you can do with like e- we can make pancakes to like next week like you need to simmer down son <laughs> make the bread and he's like okay okay <laughs> and he also like goes to a thrift store for the first time because he's a trust fund kid and he's like i don't know why i've never been to a trust thrift store before but i got you this cool like old-fashioned starter jar which she was like oh i've always wanted one of these but like oh, wait, I, no, I no, 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 no. I wait sorry find- there's there's an inter- the interaction i, I want to say something about the interaction with sure. with syrah in between this so yeah so this is when um rena says the sees the picture of like him on the yacht or whatever mm-hmm. and syrah at some point is like like rena's like constantly suspicious she's like why are you like coming over here and syrah's like you're not still mad about the blog thing and mm-hmm. i'm like yeah but but syrah did you ever apologize for that no. like and like Rena's constantly like, oh well, Cyrus is in a really tough time, like like headspace mentally. Like I shouldn't be mad at her. I shouldn't have this resentment. But I'm like, listen, a like going through a tough time does not excuse you being an asshole. Like, listen, if you treat people poorly and you're going through a tough time, like I understand, but you gotta apologize afterward. Like you you can't just like yeah. be like, oh, I w- had a, was having a mental health crisis, and that excuses me from like treating people poorly second of all we literally learned like last chapter that during that same time rena was like also having like alcohol abuse episodes so like i'm like rena you seem to be having an equally tough time like i yeah, don't <laughs> it's never explained why like the parents made Syrah move in with rena either or why she threw the sourdough starter out the window. I'm still, like, pretty hung up on that. And Cyrus like, <laughs> oh, she's like, I apologize for that. But also, like, no harm done because you just made a new one. And I'm like, all right. But that involves, like, a week of, like, feeding it, you know, like, every day. And it's really work, annoying. Yeah. So she vents to Nadim about, like, all of this when he brings her, like, the nice little thrift store jar that I have not been able to Google. But I'm intrigued. And he's like, oh, well, like, 
part of me wants to say like you should be happy that your parents care enough to interfere but like that's not right there should be a middle ground he's like my dad doesn't give a fuck about me my mom like died when i was young um but anyway let's do your life shampoo <laughs> yeah and i'm like ah oh, yes the classic lice check foreplay move yeah because in yeah. fact they do the lice shampoo <laughs> and then they immediately start making like and they're like and she's like oh no i can't do this but then this like when we get like, the yes. mayday mayday sound effect yeah <laughs> and we get we get this excellent quote where she says he kissed her like he ate her bread savoring each taste <laughs> i'm like excellent use of the food metaphor in a sex scene a hundred percent but then but then the self-doubt kicks in and she like pushes him away because she's like i can't be sure that you like me like for me and not just because like you promised my dad like you would give us a chance to like you gotta go mm-hmm. and i'm like god God but don't damn. worry. It doesn't last too long. It doesn't because... last too long. Because then he invites her over for dinner after the contest goes live. And they're really popular. Mm-hmm. And there's also another couple in the contest called the Jeffs. I just like to call that out because I think it's very funny. <laughs> they're like a gay couple where they're both named Jeff. I... <laughs> and I'm not sure, but it's I'm picturing it as like one of them is J-E-F-F and one of them is G-O-E. G-E-O-F-F. Yes. You know? Yeah. 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 They agree on like being honest or whatever. And then she's also like, what should I bring? And he's like, all I need is you. And I'm like, perfect. And then he also bakes her bread. And it's not as good as her bread, but like, you know, yeah, it's passable. Like, it's edible. It would have been shocking if he somehow managed to make like great sourdough. She is explicitly, she's like, I would have been shocked if yeah. like, this bread was perfect. Yeah. She's like, but it's okay. Yeah. It's a little overproved, but no soggy <laughs> bottoms here. <laughs> a, a good a good shop crack. So you can really ask for. <laughs> He, like, gets on one knee and, like, does, like, a whole proposal. And then he's like, will you promise never to marry me? Like, we're just going to be fake engaged. Ha, ha, ha. And then he's like, I got this ring for $30. But don't worry. It won't turn your finger green. Because, like, the other ring that they used did turn mm. her finger green. And I'm like, where did this man find a ring for $30 that wouldn't turn your finger green? Because I have never managed to find that. Like, what? <laughs> like, I've never – no. Like, what? I feel like it's just luck of the draw, honestly. Like, it's not like every cheap ring will turn your finger green. It just depends, like, what it's made up of. Like, I've your, never, your I've particular. had cheap rings that, like, will last maybe a month and then they'll start turning my finger green. It depends on your, like, skin chemistry, too. Like, a ring yeah. that turns some one person's finger green won't necessarily do it for another person. So maybe, like, she's just lucky that way. Well, no, because obviously, like, her finger does like turn i mean like with the stuff. second with the second ring like maybe whatever is in that one like doesn't happen to i don't know react with her but then biome. they have pretty closed door sex um and she pees after it which i think this is the first time this has ever happened <laughs> in any of the books that we do she finally pees and finally we have a woman who is like i'm not gonna get a uti today no yep. sir yeah she pees after sex yeah good for you and then Syrah comes over again and we finally have like I forget what the circumstances are. Oh, she comes over to like try some like dips and stuff for her cooking book. And we finally get like a heart to heart or whatever. And Syrah just is just, you know, the culmination of Syrah being like, why can't we have like a better relationship? And Rena being like, well, you fucking like tanked my life. And Syrah's like, well, that was kind of on purpose. Like I didn't know about the book deal, but like you're always Miss Perfect. And like I just wanted to take you down a peg. And Rena's like, what do you mean I'm Miss – like she's like reeling. She's like, I'm perfect. And Sarah's yeah. like, yeah, like I'm the one who has a literal degree. I'm a registered dietitian and I have a degree in like food. And yet all anyone can ever talk about is how good your cooking was, is. And I'm like, well, all right, this, this isn't the first time I was like, wait, Rena's a de- like this whole time I've been thinking like, oh, like Cyrus being kind of like a brat and like stepping on Rena's toes. But like, it seems kind of like it was the other way around. Well, okay. I listen, I hear that, but there is a huge difference between being a, like a dietitian and being a cook. Like just because you're a registered dietitian does not mean you know how to like bake and well, cook. Well, sure, but it seems like food and all of that was like might have been Cyrus thing first. Like not that Rena can't also be I into don't know it, about but like that. it doesn't seem like Rena had exclusive claim to that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? A dietitian can write a cookbook just as much as a cook. I know that, but they need someone to develop the recipes with them a lot of the times. Sure. But either way, like, it's not like, it's not like, like, the impression that we get from Rena this whole time is that Rena had this thing that was really important to her. And then Syrah decided to waltz in and just like ruin it and then like take it over, basically. But it seems like, it seems like, if anything, Syrah, like, that it was her thing first, you know? 
Yeah, I don't know. We don't have a timeline. But yeah, she's like, yeah, she's like, oh, like, I guess I have been cutting Syrah out like her whole life because like the brother, the older brother and Rena were always like mm-hmm. really close and they were always like telling Syrah she couldn't come. And she's like, maybe I should have been better at communicating. But I'm like, Syrah could have done that too. Like you listen, stop blaming yourself. Like, you both are at fault. And she's like, it's possible. That Syrah is just selfish and oblivious instead of like being a yeah. full bitch. I'm like, Selfishly oh. clueless, not actually evil. And I'm yeah. like, all right, well, <laughs> that's something. But I think we're going to need like, a little more She's like this whole time there. she's been interpreting like Syrah will say stuff. Like, and yeah. she like it, Rena interprets it as like a dig. And Passive like it aggressive. can be interpreted that way. Like she's not like irrational for interpreting right. as a dig. But like Syrah clearly didn't mean it that way. Right. Like, you know. Um, but yeah, so I mean, that's before they have the full heart to heart, like, and Rena's mm-hmm. like, oh my gosh, she did it on purpose. And Rena, like, it is very, I don't know, I think like emotionally the scene lands really well because Rena feels conflicted because she's like, I understand like how we got to this point. And like, I, she did apologize, but she's like, I still like, like, I, I can't just get over my resentment. Like it's been like 30 years of like. A bad relationship. Yeah. It can't just get fixed. And like, I feel like you do as the reader. You are like, yeah, like I, like I understand. You're like, you, you feel those emotions right along with her. I feel yeah. like, or at least I did. I was I like, ah, it- oh, man. Like I spent like half this book hating Syra yeah. for like being like such a spoiled brat. But like this, it you know, like now I have yeah. to like adjust my view of her no it was very well done i feel like realistic anyway so they make it to the next round woohoo mm-hmm. and the theme for the next video is conveniently farm to table and remember when i told you to remember about the goat milk well they're going to the farm to film it first rena has a job interview rena has a job interview in the finance department of this bakery chain and she's like wow it had never occurred to me to work in the food services industry. For some reason, I've just been killing myself working for like the finance department of retail clothing stores for some reason. And I'm like, what What do you mean it's never occurred to you? Like you're never in your wildest dreams for like, I hey, mean, I love baking. Maybe I, I could. I get it. Do I you? Get it. I get feeling like you're like, I've done this one thing. And even though a lot of my skills are definitely transferable to this other similar thing, yeah. like it feels overwhelming. It feels different. It's also a thing with women. You know how like women are like they need to have like 95 percent of the qualifications for a job listing before they'll apply. But like men will, yeah. will apply if they only have like 60 sure. percent. Like I, I understand that mentality of like feeling like you're trapped in something that you've always been doing. I don't. And like definitely being able to like apply skills elsewhere, but just like not even knowing how to go about it. Like the only reason she comes across this job is because her old job hired like a careers coach to like get all the laid off people hired again, like jobs, which is very nice. I don't think most companies do that. Mm. It's probably Allison. I'm going to be honest. It's probably something that's like totally normal in Canada, but like the US is just like, fuck you. Like Canada probably has like protective labor laws or something that like, oh, for sure. Like that's definitely what it is. It's definitely just like, they <laughs> yeah. anyway you don't have to rub it in. this whole book was just like rubbing in how and much she gets to keep her health it. insurance and she gets laid off <laughs> like, she because because her health insurance is not tied, tied to her, her job. job god unbelievable she goes to meet the she like has the she has the interview <laughs> the interview with, like, goes great yeah the interview with like the accounting leader goes great and she's like well the second round of interviews like you're really great like why don't you come meet our ceo he's at the bakery his name is leon bergeron which is just the funniest <laughs> name ever. <laughs> i love it i loved i loved hearing it every time his name it's like you got to say the full name too you can't just say leon it's leon, leon bergeron. bergeron and she because she's told she told the interview lady about how she loves bread and so that's they like bond over their love of bread and then he's like, oh, like, we can go in the back. We just have to wait for the book club to be done. Wink, wink. And she's like, what? And he's like, yeah, the book club. Like, I'm, I've been, sh- I've been like, angling to get them to let me in for years. But, like, maybe they'll finally let me in, like, someday soon. And the book club meeting ends and out comes a bunch of, like, older women, one of whom is Rena's mom. <laughs> and we find out that this is, like, it's not a book club. It's a poker club. It's they a gamble. poker league. Yeah, which I guess – I didn't know this, but I guess gambling is, like, haram in Islam also. I feel like she's that like, makes yeah, – She's, I like – it, it does yeah. make sense. Yeah, but she's, like, mom, like, what? Does dad know about this? The mom's, like, don't fucking tell him. Also, whenever I win, I give my money to charity. So 
it's but like Maria. she also okay. like goes to Las Vegas like with the yeah. poker league. Rita's like, so that's what your Las Vegas trip was about? It wasn't just a trip with the girls, like a girls. Like, well, it was a trip with the girls, but like you know, we did this, and she's like, well, mom did always have a superb poker face. Like, yeah. I guess this is why. I guess when you don't tell anyone about anything about yourself, that you'll have a great poker face. Yeah, and she's like friends with Leon. So the the secrets have begun to unravel. Yes, it's important. Yeah. So now they're in the country. Um. Nadim has brought the sourdough starter to the country because he's like, I can't just leave him alone. Al. Like, Al, he'll die. You know Al doesn't like to miss his feedings. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. And they have a great time. Duncan, like, squares off with Nadim and is, like, you know, pulling his, I don't I know, a pissing contest. Macho, yeah. But then, like, they're friends, whatever. Yeah. he. I just I just like the description. It was, like, he looked like a fire gin appraising his enemy. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, they filmed the video, and the only part that I would like to comment on this video is that Nadim makes Rina collect the eggs from a feisty <laughs> chicken named Agatha, uh-huh. and like, like, sorry to Rina, but like, if someone made me like collect eggs from a chicken, I would simply pass out. Like, I just, I, I would not be able. Oh, to I was like this. Loki judging her for like being so. No, you know I am with birds. No, but I would like to call this out. He's like, she's like, what if like. Agatha bites me and Adim is like oh like even if she does like it'll just be like she won't it won't bite. hurt it'll and just Duncan be like a little pinch like, she will bite <laughs> and I'm like I'm like bullshit I'm calling bullshit Nadim it does fucking hurt when birds bite you yeah, like people what the always you- say that about, like parakeets and stuff there's yeah. like well Okay, there's a difference because like Chickens my friend though. has a bird who is obsessed with me. She loves blondes and she like especially loves me. Like she always like will fly. every time I'm over the house, the bird will, like fly across the whole house to like sit on my shoulder. And like she at sometimes she likes to like give me kisses and she'll like nip me. And so like that kind of biting doesn't hurt. It's just like a little like, you know, pulling. Mm-hmm. But like when a bird wants to bite you, like oh, when yeah. it wants to get you. Well- but like chickens, that hurts. Yeah, when like a parrot type bird, you know, like it's a difference. I don't know. I feel like a chicken doesn't have as much. Chickens like, have. They mm, peck, but like they can't. I don't know. Mm, chickens eat. Chickens will hunt. Chickens are like aren't chicken. They're like omnivores, right? And they'll mm. like eat like mice by like pecking them to death. Oh, I don't know. I don't That's know like a thing. <laughs> I'm sure you're not thinking of horses. I don't know. I feel like the fact that she doesn't like chickens is a bit suspicious, personally. But I'm willing to overlook it. Yeah, they're natural omnivores. They eat bugs and small animals. Nice. They're dinosaurs. Like, why wouldn't they? I know, but they don't have like the sharp. They don't like the sharp, like curved beaks of like the parrot type birds. Those are are way worse to me. But it's and also just like the random birds that will like swoop me in Tyler Park. It's horrible. (laughs) Chickens can't fly. At least like they have that going for them. They can fly a little bit, but they can't like swoop down on you and dive bomb you. But they can like come up from below, which I feel like show of territorial dominance. Yeah, anyway, I was calling bullshit on that, whatever. <laughs> and Rena's just having a crisis this whole time because she's, like, so mad about how much she likes Nadim. She's like, oh, my God, like, this fucking sex. They're, like, officially dating now. I don't mm-hmm. know whether we, like – I don't know whether you, you got that from the fact that they had sex, but, like, they're, like, dating now, but they're not engaged. And she's like, oh, my God, like – this relationship is so good like what the fuck and she's just like self-sabotaging all over the place Mm -hmm. and like to be fair to her she is like nadine like from the very first video like before they started dating before they were even friends like when they were just like drunk together like she was like nadim has always been able to like turn it on for the camera like he's always like acted like he was in love with me and she's like there's no and like at the end we get that like yeah he was basically like from the beginning like i was obsessed with you but like i do understand her being like i don't know how much of this is an act because like he is very good at turning it on because he is flirty he's a rake tm i think i i took it as like he's not so much turning it on that's just like how he always is around her and she just doesn't realize that he's like that yeah yeah until she sees it back on camera you know yeah. and then she's like oh. how he's always sniffing her hair every time they watch the videos back yeah, there's always like at least one exactly. mention of where he's sniffing her hair <laughs> exactly and like, he definitely does that yeah. shit like all the time she doesn't notice <laughs> yeah no, no no yeah it's definitely like not like fully rational of her like it's definitely like a product for insecurities but i'm just saying like her her like reasoning to herself isn't like entirely unsound i feel like yeah because like watching her she starts out like less than, like, right because she's like it doesn't make sense that he would like be yeah. this way around me from the beginning so like he must be able to be a good actor mm-hmm. so they progress to the 
second to last round of the competition, which is like in studio, like actually being filmed by a crew and like with the other contestants and like – And they're all super nice. It's like yeah, a great British Bake Off type atmosphere. Like I was going to say, it's like they're like – you. he's like, you Canadians though. Like everyone's so nice and cooperative. And I'm just, I'm just like – I'm just picturing like Canadian GBB like <laughs> – But also just like – But I just Canadian, even like regular yeah. GBB is like so nice. I was like, what do you mean, Nadim? Like baking shows on – in the UK, the one that I've seen. And just Canadian. <laughs> it's also been very nice. General. Like, that's like their MO. Like, she goes to brunch the next day, and Syra's like, oh my gosh, I'm engaged. Like, yay, I'm engaged. Um, Maybe my so maid of honor. Yeah, she has to be a maid of honor. Ashraf is in the background. Ashraf finally makes an appearance, and I'm like, yeah. I'm immediately in love with Ashraf. He's like, he's just so, it's like the perfect, like, super hyper puppy character with like super stoic like cat character yeah like, that's what it's yeah. ashraf and sierra and cat i was like, like i really love that control combo. phones yeah um <laughs> but the dad is not like that thrilled about this and rena's like she would have i would have thought dad would be at least a little bit happy like it's a good muslim man this time for syra like whatever like instead of joran yeah. dutch incest dude um but the dad's <laughs> like i have something like serious to tell you guys i have my my non-gossip gossip to share with you in my in the Facebook group, there's a picture. Nadim is engaged to Jasmine Shaw, and like I I thought this earlier on. I was like, holy shit! Like, is Nadim gonna be like Jasmine Shaw's fiance that abandoned her in Egypt? And lo and behold, it was him. <laughs> like Salim Shaw posted a picture and was like, can't wait to like welcome this man into the family, my daughter's fiance. Mm-hmm. And it's like an old picture of him, but it's still like they're like, well, he hasn't been there for a while, so like. And Jasmine Shaw, they, we find out, had also been, like, posting on her now-deleted Instagram about, like, her fiancé. And he wasn't in the pictures there, but it was like, oh, love my fiancé. Like, my fiancé yeah. so great. Like, blah, blah, blah. And the parents' reaction is like, oh, my gosh, Rena, like, how could you, like, actually, like, be with him? Well, cause, yeah, because Rena tells them. She's like, she's like, what are you talking about? Like, we're actually dating. Like, Yeah. They're like, how could you disgrace the family? Like, how could you do this? And she's like, you guys asked me to date him and marry him. Like, how can you? And Syra, like, sticks up for her. And she's like. Yeah. When Joran cheated on me, like, you guys were such assholes and you blamed me and, like, you were just saying, like, worrying about it getting out. So, like, fuck off and we're leaving. And, like, Rena was the only one that was nice to me. Right. Which I, li- I, I like. I just feel like this is, like, yeah, the way that, like, this sister relationship is re- repaired in this book. Because, like, by the end, like, they're super tight. Yeah. And I just feel like it, it feels very natural. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Um. So she, like, kind of spirits her way and, like, you know – they're like ready to go pour sugar in his gas tank, which I've never heard that. <laughs> but it sounds, I don't know. I assume, I just feel like pouring anything forward in a gas That's tank not is going to fuck yeah. some shit up. It's yeah. In, it's in dust, dis- dissoluble in gas. Okay, go ahead. But if you pour sugar into like concrete, like even Ooh. just a pound of sugar, it like fully ruins the concrete. And that was something that French activists did <laughs> in like the 70s or something. They were trying to like stop like certain buildings from being created. And so they would just like pour sugar in the concrete and it just like ruins it like completely. What happens? Is it just not set ever? I don't know. I haven't like looked. I've confirmed that the French activists did this, but I haven't confirmed like what the actual. What I'm picturing is. is like they're rolling out a sidewalk or something or like a road and they pour the sugar in it and the concrete never sets, therefore creating concrete quicksand that's like a huge menace to pass her by. <laughs> just like pedestrians just like walking along and then like, whoop, like I'm in the concrete now. No. <laughs> just seems no. Like- <laughs> I feel like they would know that it didn't set. They would have just like leave it there. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so good activism, friends. If you would like to practice <laughs> some don't, civil di- some not. disobedience, I mean, all you need is a bag of sugar. Okay. <laughs> they would definitely ruin the other dad's business. Wait, 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 wait. But also, Syra's like, um, <laughs> and this is when Ashraf really shines. She's like, listen, do you want Ashraf to disable his phone? <laughs> like, he can do that. <laughs> Incredible. And Ashraf just silently driving in the front seat is like, like nod solemnly memo memo noted (laughs) and so like throughout this like you know like just basically decides she's like i'm just gonna cut off contact with nadim like this is such a betrayal like this is so terrible and it doesn't occur to her until like i forget who brings it up but someone is like have you yeah her brother's like have you asked actually it's multiple people it takes multiple people being like have you talked to him like why are you taking the word of the shahs who are like your you know 
verified bona fide family enemies why would you take their word over nadim's like what reason do we have yeah. to like do that and then it like occurs but also she finds out also in this time period just to like add more salt to the wound leon bergeron didn't give her the job oh yeah yeah and she like blames <sighs> her trail. mom but like well, yeah. she thinks that her mom, like, wanted her to stay away from the poker club, so, like, she told Leon yeah. to give her the job. But it's actually that, like, Leon Bergeron wanted to hire her, but, like, the accountant lady wanted someone, like, with more experience, so they went with, like, the accountant lady. She has ladies. 10 years of experience. Like, who has more experience? I don't know. Whatever. I know. Um, <laughs> but, like, I was just I thinking about that. Finance also, works. why did the accountant lady, like, lead her on so much and, like, have the interview be? I don't know. I was expecting them to be, like, oh, we actually want you to be, like, be our head chef instead, <laughs> but that's not <laughs> what happens. Yeah, so then she finally Googles him. She Googles Nadeem. And she gets all that background about like Jasmine Shaw's Instagram. And she also finds out about like a project that ja- – like a hotel, like a luxury hotel. You knew about this, like, this yeah. The like, area of London that like should not have had a luxury hotel and it, like went over budget. The whole project was shit. And like Jasmine Shaw and Nadim were somehow like connected like, to that. They're like blaming it on Nadim, yeah. Yeah. No, they were blaming – it was like – they like Nadine wasn't mentioned, but she's like Nadine was definitely involved. With, like we whatever. found out about it like earlier, and then it turns out they were like trying to pin it on him, but it like wasn't really. So so then this is where this is when the house of cards really starts to crumble. And like honestly, I was like laughing out loud so much in the end of this, <laughs> just like it all just like comes out. She like sees Nadine in the hallway, but she's like, no, we can't talk. And mm-hmm. I know we're supposed to be like mad at him at this time because we don't know like that he's actually innocent but like the only thing i can fixate on is how rena's like oh and he painted my toenails last week (laughs) (laughs) another foot sad um and then we continue the communication bonanza when rena and syra go to talk to their dad so the dad's like i need to tell you guys something it's gonna come as a huge shock so just ready your your jammies there um i was swindled i was bamboozled i was taken in by an architect and rena and sarah are like dude like mom told us this like a month ago and he's like your mom knows about this i've been trying to keep it from her that's why i arranged this whole engagement oh my god and then it turns out that he knows about the mom's poker club and basically they all knew each other's secrets and it was the dad who orchestrated. So, so Rena had been thinking that the mom was behind the whole Nadim engagement thing. Yeah. But it turns out that it was the dad. But it wasn't. So earlier, like Nadim had been like, "Oh, I saw a picture of you before coming here, but like it didn't look anything like you." And Rena's like, "Oh, that must have been like at my brother's wedding when I like you know had a really you know weird makeup that I didn't normally wear, like whatever." Um, but it turns out that it was actually because the dad had initially set up Syra, not Rena. So, so, like, he showed – it was a completely different person that, like, Nadine had seen a picture of. And <laughs> it was, like, after Cyrus' breakup and the dad was, like, oh, it'll be good for her to, like, move on, I guess, to another arranged, like, whatever. <laughs> she goes home and she sees Nadine. He's, like, has boxes and he's, like, my dad, like, like I have to go back to Tanzania. Like, I'm leaving on Monday. And she's just, like, the sirens go off. She's, like, no! And she's, like, okay, we'll talk tomorrow. Like, we're going to, like – have breakfast or something or like dinner or whatever but then she forgets her keys again again she like pretends to forget them i'm pretty sure no so i think she actually go over does. there anyway she forgets your keys and so like they have to talk now and they basically they have like a heart to heart where like she's like i can't like be like fully in the same room with you so like you're gonna sit on this side on the side of the door in your apartment and i'm gonna sit on the other side of the door and like we're gonna keep the chain open <laughs> like the chain on so like there's a little crack and we're just gonna communicate yeah. through that and so this whole conversation is just like through this and we find out that nadim was engaged to jasmine but the reason that the development failed wasn't him. It was because of her because she was, like, really inexperienced but wanted to make it, like, super, like, high class but, like, didn't know what she was doing. So just, Well, like, he was, like – it was also kind of my fault because, like, yeah. I didn't care about the project. So I just, like, let signed off on everything yeah. without actually, like, thinking about it. Yeah. And, like, I thought that Jasmine would, like, give me, you know, finally, like, a home. But, like, really it wasn't right for me. And it all came to a head in Egypt when we were on vacation. And she was, like, let's start another hotel in Egypt. And I was, like, we're not fucking doing that. And that, like, started a huge fight. And then she ran off with my passport and then I had to get like airlifted out of Tanzania. But like how did how did she but still Jasmine was stranded and needed to get like rescued. So, like how maybe she Jasmine wasn't maybe also, like the they just like said the opposite. Yeah, the like story got twisted. I mean through because there's like through the gossip chain WhatsApp, like you really think yeah. everything's gonna be hundred yeah. percent accurate. The most unrealistic thing is that she's like, Oh, my mom still hasn't good thing she hasn't figured out WhatsApp yet. Cause like I feel like that's 
very like her mom's definitely on yeah WhatsApp. Like, she definitely has what's oh for yeah. sure how do you think the poker lady is communicating yeah. are you kidding me um yeah but he is like jasmine shaw brought out the worst in me and like you bring out the best in me mm-hmm. and then she's also like why didn't you call me and he's like i don't know like my phone service just like suddenly <laughs> stopped so working reason. and she's like ashra <laughs> And I literally, I was lying in bed last night listening to this and I cackled. I like fully was like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Um, so we find out. So Jasmine was like trying to be an influencer or whatever. And she had like a bunch of deals, like wedding related and like, you know, engagement related deals. So she asked Nadim for a favor. She was like, can I just like, you know, continue to pretend that we're engaged on there? Like, I won't use your picture or anything, but like, I'll put it on there. And Rena's like, so I'm not even your first fake fiance. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but we find out that like somehow screenshots of that Instagram got put on WhatsApp. It's the cousin. The cousin who's obsessed with Jasmine Shaw. Yeah, the cousin. Like, let it be known. And that's how Nadine's father found out. And he, like, freaked out. And he was like, you have to make her delete it. Or, like, I'm cutting you off. And, like, whatever. So that's why poor Jasmine had to delete her Instagram. Um, But then Rena's like, well, why? That still doesn't explain why uh, Salim Shah would put a picture and, like, pretend like you're still engaged on the Facebook group until we realized that, like – the cooking video had got out and like it seems like they're engaged. So Salim Shah must have seen that. And then just like specifically to piss off his rival, yeah. Mr. Munji, <laughs> he like doctored this, you know, like post and put it up there just to be like, meh, 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 meh. Because he uses a quote from, from the, the video where show. like yeah. where Nadim is like, oh, she feels like home or something. So he uses like some version yeah. of that. And they're like, oh my God. <laughs> and it all comes together. Yeah. It's incredible. I love it. Yeah. Um, I also really feel for poor Jasmine having to delete her Instagram. It's like, yeah, she's TikTok. also like, yeah, super rich. So, like, I don't really. Yeah, no, I know. Anyway. It just makes me, it just gives me flashbacks to our uh, current uh, our TikTok. <laughs> but then, then they're like, oh, we still can't be together because, like, you're still moving to Tanzania. Yeah. And, like, and it really bothers me that he's, like, still going to leave this whole time. But I guess there's the immigration. Well, he can't. Issue. He doesn't like, have a work, work visa. Work. Yeah. 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 He doesn't have a work visa anymore. So he's, like, he's he's only got a certain amount of time left where he's legally allowed to be in the country. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, they have hot goodbye sex against the door. Like, he fucks her against the door. And then they fuck. They're like, we have to fuck on this, all, all the surfaces of this entire apartment. <laughs> like, and I'm like, excellent. And then, <gasps> foot job foot job foot (laughs) job foot job she gives him a foot job yes (laughs) i'm like the book went there thank god thank god incredible incredible (sighs) yeah foot job (laughs) and the first time i read this i remember being like like oh like how are they going to resolve this like he literally is going to leave the country like without her like having to move to tanzania like how the fuck is this going to get resolved and then, like, when it became – soon, like, when it started to become clear how it was going to be resolved, I was like, surely not. But, nope, that's the direction it goes in. Yep. So she goes shopping for Syrah's, like, wedding. She sees fancy foot jewelry. And she's like, oh, and she perfect. she says to get it. And she also gets herself an outfit. And she's like, oh, the rest of my family didn't notice – because they were all too busy deciding whether Syrah looked better in orange or red. And I was like, well, that's the whole fucking point of the trip. Like, this is like yeah. her wedding I don't think clothes. she says it in a judgmental <laughs> yeah. way. I think it's but just like, this is why my family wait, wait, wait. didn't notice. We're, sorry, but we skipped over another very important piece of information from this chat. We find out that the mom was very popular as a girl with the with the boys. Like, in you Tanzania. know. And the man that wanted to marry her before she married the dad was, drum roll, please. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the dad hates it. Like, it so it's just rivalry. a long-standing yeah. like pissing contest because they both wanted to marry. Yeah, girl. the mom was like, "Well, uh, I would never have married him because my parents didn't approve of him, and I knew that they knew what was best for me." Like, she's like, "Wink, wink, nudge, nudge for the me." Yeah. <laughs> Rena goes back and she's like, "I know what I want now," and she's like, "Nadim, I've wor- worn my foot jewelry for you." Let's get married, baby, <laughs> so you can stay in Canada. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, okay. Yeah, they quote unquote elope. 
They just have like a quick ceremony. She has a mirror. I forget who's her maid of honor, Marley or Amira. Amira. Syra is only a bridesmaid, which is pretty bold considering she just asked her to be a maid of honor. Okay, still, but I know, you know I get she's it, closer like, I with Amira. Mm-hmm. But also, I would fucking like object at your wedding if you didn't make me your fucking maid yeah. of honor. Just and especially you know. after she agreed to be hers. I don't know. I like I, I get it, but also like that's I, it's just yeah, bold whatever. is all I have to say. Like, hey, at least Syra gets to be invited to the secret wedding. The sure. only other people there are the officiant and fucking Duncan. Yeah. <laughs> the next day, they're like planning their, the quick reception, and the parents find out, and they're like, "How could you do this? Like, why are you like? What do we even know about this boy anyway? Like, how can we trust his loyalty to the family?" And Rena's like, "Once again, I am asking you to remember that it was your idea for me to marry him. Like, you were simultaneously like, how can we trust him in business, but also Rena needs to marry him. <laughs> like, oh my god, yeah. But then she finds out she's like, oh, they're not upset that I married him. They're upset that I didn't have a big Indian wedding. Yeah, like they're like that's what they're mad that they didn't get to plan that. And she's like, honestly, like thank fucking god. <laughs> like, so they pull up the final video shoot because before they were like oh we're not going to be able to like we made it into the finals but we're not going to be able to like do it because like you're going to be deported and also like we've broken up so they filmed the last video at their wedding reception which is like super cute or whatever and rena calls her parents out she's like we need to stop we need to start fucking communicating everyone like you need everyone needs to simmer down because like this is absurd and then syra and rena decide to go into business together and also write the cookbook together and the epilogue is a press release and i'm so glad like hating game take notes we find out whether they won we find out that they won the food yeah. tv contest so the press release says they won the food tv contest in october and because they don't say like a specific year you assume it's october of last year like say it's, this is coming out in march or whatever i forget what mm-hmm. the press release and then they're like the cookbook is coming out this september which means there is less than a year they haven't even finished the proposal and i I'm literally going to combust. I'm going to combust at the idea of a cookbook being able to be written, like designed, copy edited, printed, and shipped like in a year. You can't, you can barely even, you can't even do that with a regular book, with just like a regular book with only text in it. A cookbook with pictures? It needs to be printed in China. Like what? I literally was having heart palpitations. Like as someone who has worked on many, many cookbooks, I was literally, I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> All right, whatever. So, whatever. Anyway, it was a cute book. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> so, cat scale. Okay, so we have plus two for cats being like, like pretty chill. Good. Yeah. In, in I feel like Islam. nothing else was, I mean. Well, we established that Ashrav is a cat. Yeah. But he definitely. like only appeared in like two scenes yeah. and just in the background. Yeah. Nadim, I don't think is a cat. Like oh, cats are into feet, but like dogs are too. Like when you're sweating, your dog is like licking your feet. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like that's like. No, he was very <laughs> dog. He was very yeah. like, dare I say, golden retriever like. Mm. A little bit. Bernie's Mountain Dog. Mm. St. Bernard? Bernie's Mountain like Dog. Like Beethoven specifically? Mm-hmm. But like Bernie's Mountain Dog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's uh, Rena? I don't know. Like, I feel like she's kind of a cat. She's like a hyena. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like mid- middle of the road. No. I feel like Rena's kind of a cat, but not like super cat vibes. The parents. They're like... I don't know. Hippos. <laughs> they look really gentle, but like they could snap you in half. <laughs> <laughs> Hippos are the most secrets. dangerous animal in the, the they African continent. They like they like pass, you know, they you don't realize how dangerous they are. They're like under the, like, water under the water. Under the water, exactly. They pop up yeah. And cause yeah. chaos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Three. Three. Two. Two. One, one, four, five. Okay, so four point five. Delicious. Mm-hmm. Allison, where can they find us? Wow, you did it. <laughs> um, you can find us on uh, Instagram and Facebook at We Read It One Night. You can find us on Twitter at We Read It Podcast. You can find us on our new TikTok. Moment of silence. <laughs> We're still waiting for the old TikTok. <laughs> um. <laughs> We're not losing hope, but we did start a new TikTok uh, at We Read It Pod, right? That's what it is. Mm-hmm. You can follow us on that. 
Oh, you can email us, at gmail.com. Send us your book recommendations. You can also send it to us in DMs. That's what like most people have been doing. I feel mm-hmm. like it's like, like half and half. But yeah, send us your book recommendations. Um, we've got quite a few scheduled for the summer. Yeah. We've been, I mean, yeah, so far it's been great. Like there's been a bunch that they've been winners. I never would have like thought of to do. Yeah. yeah. They've been winners. Like some of them are books that I've already read, and I'm like, this is an excellent fucking book. Like it happened one summer has been recommended mm-hmm. and that was my 2021 comfort read mm-hmm. but then we get things like dark love and ugly dark lover and ugly love like an heiress's guide to deception and yeah. desire just a, a, great, a one. great romp yeah so send us your book and we have more yeah we have more yeah. scheduled if okay. you recommended a book and you haven't heard it here don't worry yeah don't <laughs> it's on the list. we're not like tiktok we will we will we will updated. do it <laughs> Yeah, we won't we won't betray you. We won't like ghost We you. won't accuse yeah. you of being under 13. I guess we, should, we can say that now. <laughs> we made a for new TikTok. And then yeah, the reason friends that we found out we were banned from TikTok, we did hear from that is because like we got flagged for being under 13. So like uh, like hats off to Rachel guys for like achieving a JD PhD in 13 years. Month, like that's me. incredible. <laughs> like if you want our skincare routine, like let us know. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, Godspeed, comrades. Godspeed, comrades.